in front of all the guests, she should have honored him by going. Otherwise, he is being humiliated in front of all the people. Correct? So that's another perspective. Any other perspective? You don't have to be party to something that's wrong. You don't have to be party to something wrong. Okay? Then? Hmm? So. Okay. It violated her dignity as a person. She was being treated as a thing. Okay. And naturally she said no. Okay. So, as a human being, she was within her rights. Any other perspective? Okay. <coughs> she could have found another way of saying no. Okay. I mean, another way of avoiding this issue. Hmm? <coughs> Okay, a wrong is wrong anyway. Hmm? Okay. Hmm? So, here are some different perspectives on what could or should not have been done. Hmm? Now, before we move on, uh, to handle this, we will look at another aspect. Uh, last week, after the Bible study was over, uh, brother had brought up one important issue. Okay, uh, we said authority entails respect, obedience. Okay, submission actually, which is more than mere external obedience. Hmm? So, uh, brother had brought up an issue. What if the husband, hmm, uh, taking a practical situation, has less qualification than the wife? Okay. What if he earns less? What if he is unemployed? What if he is disabled? What if there are so many other scenarios that are possible? as a result of which a person may not be respected at home. Okay. He may not be able to function as the head of the family. Okay. So, okay. So, <laughs> all right. So let us see what education does to a man. Huh? What did we learn in school? How much of it was related to being a husband or being a proper human being? Huh? You, yeah, you learn an earthworm has got a nerve ring, frog has three chambered heart. How helpful is that to life? Okay, here's another perspective. Does respect have to do with education, employment? Hmm? So, father should be respected because he is father, not for any other reason. Yes, yes, yes. Should Abdul Kalam respect his father, who was only a fisherman? Yes, he should. So, should a wife respect her husband regardless of? Okay. Hmm? Alright, so we come to another question. Is respect felt or 
इज रिस्पेक्ट मैंडेटेड मेड यू नो कंपल्सरी बाय लॉ आइडियली अ मैन शुड सो लिव हिज लाइफ दैट हिज वाइफ एंड चिल्ड्रन फील रिस्पेक्ट फॉर हिम बट रिस्पेक्ट इज मैंडेटेड एनी वे ओके दे हैव टू गिव द रिस्पेक्ट वेदर दे फील द रिस्पेक्ट और नॉट ओके एंड वी शुड ऑल्सो बी वेरी केयरफुल दैट आवर फीलिंग्स आर नॉट बेस्ड ऑन आर्टिफिशियल क्राइटेरिया ऑफ वॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट रिस्पेक्टेबिलिटी ओके सो दिस वॉज फॉर द वाइफ now for the men huh? we said a man should so live that his wife and children respect him hmm? the word respect comes from re spec to look again okay or in other words a life so lived that it merits a second glance that is the root of respectable okay a man should so live his life so put that way the onus is on the man hmm? to live his life out in such a way that it is what a second look but at the same time there can be completely artificial criteria hmm? for now there is a particular family that i know where the man is not a graduate she is a post graduate he is unemployed okay she earns well this is an actual family that i know huh? but he tries to live up to the expectations of his in-laws all right so he spends with no income how do you spend you borrow when you borrow you get into trouble serious respect issues in this home nobody in this home respects him he doesn't have bad habits he doesn't drink or smoke and if the man has any bad habit then respect does become harder okay so let's put it this way respect is mandated god has laid it down authority has to be respected okay children must respect their parents wives must respect their husbands okay that is mandated but husbands also must conduct themselves in a respectable manner and make things easy for others who have been asked to respect them okay right so we will we will put it this way <laughs> then we come to that question should did washtai do right in saying no it's a very difficult question to handle as we have seen there are multiple perspectives to what happened okay <clears throat> one is her husband has asked her to do something so she should do it on the other hand what her husband is asking her to do lowers her dignity as a human being okay she is going to be exhibited for 6 months he put on display all the treasures of his kingdom all that he had acquired and now she is prized acquisition that's probably how he sees his wife hmm his prized acquisition is going to be on display correct and what type probably didn't want to be treated that way 
there, there is a term that is used for a wife like that. Do you know what it is? She is called a trophy wife. Okay? Where a man has married her solely for her value in enhancing his sense of worth and being. I have been able to acquire her. Okay? So she is a trophy wife. Huh? So, <clears throat> uh, it looks like that's what Xerxes wants to do. She was beautiful and he wanted to show what he, the most powerful man on earth, in those days, could acquire for himself. Okay? So she was to be on display. And that violated her dignity as a human being created in the image and likeness of God. Would it be wrong for a husband to display his wife this way? Hmm? Yes? Alright. So now we, we put another perspective. The, the reason I keep doing this, even last time we talked about children, is no parent treats his or her child as a person. We rob our children of their dignity as human beings. Okay? So we have guests coming. Come, come, come. Tell nursery rhymes, beta. Is that right? No. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to show off my child or I'm trying to show off how smart a papa I am to have such a smart child. Okay? It is dignity and appreciation by proxy. See, we don't always sit and think like this. But do children have the right to decide for themselves whether they should be used as Exhibit A or not. Do children have rights? There also there is an issue of children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. That's what scripture tells us. God has left them with no choice. Papa says recite Baba Black Sheep. Child has to come and say Baba Black Sheep. But should not a parent think Does my child want to do it? And very often, you will see children, eyes wide, absolutely petrified, knees knocking, you know, <laughs> tongue frozen. We don't think we should handle this with a little more sensitivity. We should as parents treat our children as persons. Okay, some of us are already grandparents. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of late for that. Hmm? But then we can teach our children to teach their children with respect. Huh? As human beings. Hmm? As those created in the image and likeness of God. Did it occur to Xerxes to ask his wife, Hey, I've got guests. I want you to meet them. Are you free? Could you come down for a minute? Could he have asked like that? He could have asked like that. But that's not how he asked. He commanded her to come. Okay? Could we ask our children like that? I've got guests. I'd like you to meet them. Are you free to come down? Yes. Should we ask? Yes, we should ask. We should not violate their sense of dignity as persons. Okay. Back to Xerxes and watch that. Hmm? 
<coughs> As we said there are, this is a very complex situation. He is not only her husband, he is also the king. Disobeying him not only dishonors him as a husband, but it also amounts to disobeying the king. And then the king will be forced to do something because he was publicly disobeyed, dishonored. So, he put her in that tight situation. He could have handled it better. He could have sent a relative instead of seven government officials. She could have sent word through someone, look, I'm having my own guess. Okay? What would it look like if I just walked out on them? That, that's what was happening, right? Even she had thrown a party. She had guests. So could she actually just walk out like that? Hmm? And so guests are drunk. Do you really want me to come there and have all these men leer at me? It could have been handled better. But it was not handled better. With the consequences that in motion, something, something was set in motion which would have disastrous consequences for their family life. Does this happen in our homes? Sometimes we say things and do things which have very far reaching consequences. Hmm? Once said, words cannot be retracted. Even if you say sorry, it's like a glass that falls down and breaks. You put it together, you stick it up, the scars will remain. It's not going to be like before. So we have to be very careful about our words. The Bible says so much about controlling the tongue. Perhaps nowhere are the effects of the tongue to be seen in such vivid colors as in our own homes. In the Bible we have examples. We have Job's friends who come to visit him, four friends when they hear about the disaster that has hit him. When they see him from a distance, they are stunned. And for seven days, none of them opens his mouth. They are so shocked at what has happened to him. And perhaps in the entire book of Job, that was the only good thing that he did. Once they opened their mouth, problems started. Okay? Very often, it is better not to say something. No? We visit someone in hospital. Oh, what have you got? My auntie also had to, she died. <laughs> How thoughtful. <laughs> How helpful. It is better not to visit than to visit and speak without giving thought to what we have said. We should be very careful. The Bible says there is a time to speak and a time to remain silent. Perhaps the time to remain silent is mostly. The time to speak is rare. So which is why we were taught in school. Silence is 
The finest of speech is only silver. We must learn to be quiet. We must learn to be quiet. <coughs> then, when we speak, we have to keep three things in mind. What three things should we keep in mind? What we are saying, how we are saying it, and when we are saying it. Okay? What three things should we keep in mind? What we are saying, how we are saying, and when we are saying. Are these important? Yes. The content of our speech is important. The manner of our speech is important. The timing of our speech is important. We must be very careful about these three things. Okay? That hospital visit that I talked about, that is about the content of speech. That's not what you say. Okay? The way we say it, how does it matter? Our body language is important. Our words, they communicate only a small part of the total communication. We must be careful in the tone that we use to say what we are saying. The tone can be insulting. The tone can be belligerent. We must be careful about the tone that we use. Early in the time. In a lot of homes, what happens? What are spark points when the man is leaving for work and when the man has just returned from work? Okay? When a man is leaving from work, there is intense activity that is happening. His mind is already probably there. That is not when you want to roll up your sleeves. It is going to create problems. Let him focus on getting ready and going. That's not when you pick up issue. Bill Barakya. Plenty of other times to ask about the bill. And there are things you don't have to ask. You can check on the net yourself. Okay. Many times we say things, ask things which starts a problem which if we had not spoken the issue would not come up at all. Another very bad time to ask or, or pass comments is when the person has just returned. Any husband who travels by central railway <laughs> needs time to unwind after coming home. Okay? Before you can take up any issue with that person. So we, we must be careful about the moment that we choose to bring an issue. How we say, what we say, very important. No, the, the Bible has uh, good examples. As I said, uh, sometimes a person says one thing and so we have this habit of reading between the lines. Hmm? We should learn to take what is said at face value. Okay. This is what was spoken. Hmm? <coughs> a classic example of that is there was a commander of the Syrian army, Naaman. He had a problem. He had leprosy. Okay. By the way, when the Bible uses the word leprosy, it is not always leprosy as we understand it today. Okay. They use leprosy as a very broad word. Leucoderma 
was also called leprosy. Anything which had light color patches on the skin, he may not have been a leper in the sense of a leper as we see it today. Huh? He was still functional as head of Syria's army. But he had a girl working in that house who was concerned about him. Okay. This servant girl told her mistress she had been taken as prisoner of war when Syria had raided Israel. So she said, back home we have a prophet who can heal him of his leprosy. Okay. So now the commander in chief of the army can't go over to enemy territory just like that without creating a problem. So Naaman follows protocol. He goes to his king, explains the matter to him. His king writes out a letter to the other king. Hmm? Only thing is, the letter is not very well worded. I am sending you my commander in chief. He left of his leprosy. <laughs> King of Israel, heal him of leprosy. Am I God? <laughs> and then he reads between the lines. See how he is trying to pick a fight. He knows I can't heal him. Then he will use this as provocation to attack me. Okay? See how he is picking a fight with me. We don't have to read between the lines. We should be careful that we take communication at its face value hmm? and be charitable. Give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Give the other person the benefit of the doubt so that the uh, that there is this term that is used between countries, de-escalate. All the time, we should try to de-escalate matters. Okay, whether it is between husband and wife or between parents and children, an attempt at peace should always be there. Okay? <coughs> so, Queen Vashti refused to come. Perhaps the way in which Xerxes said it left much to be desired. Perhaps the way in which Vashti said it left much to be desired. But now the deed was done. After that what? After that what? Hmm? So, let us go to which one shall we take? Shall we take 1 Peter? Let me see if that is the right passage. Just give me a moment to locate the best passage for what we are going to consider. Romans chapter 13. Reading from verse 1, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. 
Consequently, he who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. The authority that this passage is talking about is civil authority. Okay? But the principles hold good for all authority that God has instituted. Okay? Because a person disobeying authority dishonors that which God has instituted and rebels against God instituted authority and will face the consequences. So it could just as well be thought of in church could just as well be thought of at home. Okay? Then verse 3 for rulers, hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant and agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Okay? So, we ask ourselves a question. Suppose a father tells his son to do something. The son refuses to do it. Should the father punish the son? Yes, no. No? Father should not punish their children? They should punish their children. There was one no. <laughs> what was the no for? You remember we had asked what does authority entail? We said respect. We said submission. But we did not mention this. What if authority is disobeyed? <laughs> Does authority have, I am not using the word right, I am using the word duty as God's agent to punish. Which is why fathers punish their children. There are two aspects. One is judicial. Wrong has been done. Punishment has to be given. Second is corrective. The Bible is very clear about sparing the rod and spoiling the child. Okay? Modern child psychologists may say Atmat Kuthav. I think day before yesterday. Which country was that? Switzerland? Pass the law in parliament. No parent can spank their children. They could be punished if they touch their child. Okay? And there are psychologists who say that it harms your child if you punish them. Well, parents have not been punishing their children the way our parents punished us and look at what's happening in society. Okay? The way children live today is shocking. This is because they have never been corrected. In the Bible, we read about irresponsible fathers. The most notorious of them, David. He had two sons who actually rebelled against him, dethroned him and appointed themselves kings in his place. And about both of them we read, David never so much as asked them, why are you doing what you are doing? 
Okay, that's irresponsible. We read in the Proverbs that child left to himself disgraces his father. These two children left to themselves, they disgraced their father. In fact, their father loved them too much to send his army out against them. He chose instead to flee. Okay? The Bible tells us God, this is Hebrews 12, God disciplines us. If God doesn't discipline us, then we are illegitimate children. Scripture says, which of us did not have fathers who disciplined us and we respect them for it? Okay, so parents have a responsibility to discipline their children. I boarded a running train once and only once in my life. You know why? My dad's colleague saw me. I don't know where he saw me from. <laughs> and he reported it home. And the tanning I received that day, I still remember it. <laughs> My dad had never used a belt before. That was first time. And he wasn't holding the buckle end. <laughs> but it completely cured me of my newfound boldness. I was in fourth standard at that time. That was it. <laughs> right? So we move from parents to husbands. Do husbands sometimes punish their wives? Silence. I'm not saying how you punish your wife. In society at large, do husbands punish their wives? How? What are some things that husbands do? Okay. Equally, do sometimes wives think they should harm their husbands? Yes or no? No, never. No wife. You are living in utopia. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But do you know there is an NGO for protecting men from abusive wives here in Mumbai? I <laughs> That's a harsh reality. I know of a woman who's actually thrashed her husband with a stick. Big, strong guy. He took it all because he didn't want to retaliate. Okay? So here we are elders sitting in their house. I actually thought at one point she hit me. <laughs> I never felt so threatened in my life. <laughs> she was so aggressive that day. <laughs> so, how do people punish their spouses? Hmm? They could be vengeful, but with husbands, very often they feel they should punish. A wife may not think of punishment as the word, but vengeance might be the word that might be on her mind. No? But with husbands, authority issues are there. 
So what are some ways by which husbands they may come to wives? Punish their wives. Simple. Not speaking. Does it happen? Yes. Okay. Then? Finances. Controlling finances. Then? Denial of conjugal rights. Does it happen? Yes, it happens. It's there in the Bible. David? Bringing the ark to Jerusalem? Hmm? His wife saw him dancing on the street and she was disgusted. She grew up a princess. David was a shepherd boy. She had a sense of dignity which David did not share. And then when he comes home, she says, see how the king of Israel has distinguished himself by disrobing like any vulgar fellow would in the presence of servant girls. That's what she said. David took offense at what was said. The next verse simply states Michal had no children. Okay? Denial of conjugal rights. Then, what else? Violence. Especially as most men are bigger, stronger. Violence. Then, sometimes a man <coughs> may stay out at work much longer. Returning home very late. He may spend more time out with his friends. An affair may start off. Maybe even divorced. Correct? There are many ways in which men may punish their wives. Very often women may also resort to these methods. They may not use the word punishment as we said earlier to retaliate. Women may do the same. Is this common in society? Yes. In different forms, it is common in society. Does it happen among Christians? Yes. The examples I quoted are all Christian examples. They are people from my church. First time, my church, not present church, some of my present church people are looking Trying to figure out, is Nekia, who's Nekia? <laughs> I've been in many churches. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> All right. Hmm? So, this is actually very common even among Christians. Let's see what Zerxes does. Let's go back to Esther, chapter 1, 
Verse 12 says, When the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burnt with anger. Since it was customary for the king to consult experts in matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king, Karshina, Shekhar, Admata, Tarshish, Meris, Marsena and Memukan, the seven nobles of Persia and Media who had special access to the king and were highest in the kingdom. According to the law, what must be done to Queen Vashta? Okay. So now that she has done what she has done, she has to face the consequences. But he is king. So he wants to know what is the thing that he should do as king, as per the law. What should he do? Since we talked about abuse, remember I said there was there was this person who was being beaten up by his wife, big strong guy. Okay. He wasn't retaliating. Another friend actually said, okay, a very fine Christian man. His wife is also a very fine Christian woman. But somehow the chemistry between them is not right. One day he told me, the lowest rung that a human being can occupy on earth, where there is no place lower, where everyone can look down on you, the lowest place is that of being a Christian husband. Because God leaves you with no recourse. You're wrong, you're expected to forgive. You're abused, you're expected to hold back. That's the lowest. You can't get lower than that. And I know of many men who have actually not said these words, but who have felt it that way. That's about as low as you can get because you have no option but to grin and bear. Okay? But Zarkis was not a Christian. He didn't have a problem. He said, let's see how this can be fixed. <clears throat> Verse 15, according to law, what must be done to paint Vashtai? He asked, she has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the eunuchs have taken her. Then Memukan replied in the presence of the kings and nobles, Queen Vashtai has done wrong. Number one. Okay. Number two, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles of all the provinces of King Xerxes. Why? She was not just a housewife. She is queen. Whatever she does will have an impact. It will have an impact among the aristocracy. It will have an impact in the kingdom. Okay? She should have thought of it before she did anything. Okay? Then for verse 17, for the queen's conduct will become known to all women and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashtai to be brought before him. She would not come. This very day, matlab today, the day this was being discussed, this very day, the Persian and Median women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. How can he say that? They were present when she said no. Remember? There were two parties happening. 
the noble women over, were over there in front of them, she said no to the king. Now this is going to spill over into their homes. <coughs> then on to their provinces. In all of Persia, there is going to be a problem. Therefore, okay, that is verse 19. Therefore, so there is a course of action that is suggested. Okay. <coughs> it's 9, so we should stop. We'll stop with a question. We asked a question. Do husbands punish their wives? How? Do wives try to harm their husbands? How? Okay. Now the question will be for us to think as we go home. Is it right for a husband to punish his wife. Remember this section began that way. Is it right for a husband, for a father to punish his son? You agreed yes because he has the authority. It's not just his. It's not his right actually. It's his duty. So what should a husband do if there is insubordination at home? Refusal to submit. Refusal to obey. What should the husband do? Hmm? We will come back with answers. Well, sir. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time that you gave us with the word. And we pray, Father, that your word will expose all areas of our life to the counsel of your word and bring about changes in our life. We commit us into your hands to that and thank you for hearing us. In the precious and worthy name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. <coughs> uh, uh, have you read the book of Esther before? Yes. When we read it prayerfully and ask questions, did you know before that these are areas of our life that are being addressed? In the book of Esther. The book of Esther is not a story book. It is the word of God. The whole Bible is like this. If we prayerfully read God's word. The spirit of God brings up for us scrutiny. Different areas of our life. If we allow him to ask us questions. Hmm? As he asked Job questions, if we allow him to ask us questions, then we will be surprised at how our lives can be brought in order, in line with the counsel of God. Okay? So, let's enjoy reading the Bible. All of the Bible is a wonderful discovery. Hmm? As the Spirit of God uses the lives of men and women who lived a long time back to illustrate issues in our own lives so that they may be set alive. Hmm?